good day. Here are the top stories of the Manila Times on Thursday, January 27, 2022. Brought to you by Welcome Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24-7 with Welcome Online Store. Just go to shop.welcome.com.ph. With the number of new COVID-19 cases steadily dropping, the Interagency Task Force or IATF for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases is considering downgrading the coronavirus alert level in the National Capital Region or NCR. The task force will meet today, January 27, to review the COVID-19 growth rate and hospital bed utilization in Metro Manila in the past two weeks to determine if it is safe to lower the region's alert level to 2 from the present 3 by the beginning of February. Acting Palace spokesman and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Alexi Nobrales said in an interview on CNN Philippines on Wednesday. On Wednesday, the country reported 15,789 new COVID-19 cases, down from the 17,677 cases last Tuesday. The IATF is also monitoring the COVID-19 situation in 22 areas where cases remain high. The Philippine Olympic Committee or POC on Wednesday declared as persona non grata Philippine Athletic Track and Field Association or Patapa President Philip El Huico, who has been embroiled in a bitter dispute with Paul Volter, Ernest John E.J. Obiena. The committee decided to accept the recommendation of its ethics committee to sanction Huico during a general assembly meeting. 36 of the POC's 54 members voted for the ethics committee's recommendation. The National Sports Associations representing Wushu, weightlifting, squash, hockey, and athletics voted against while the associations representing netball, dance sports, and the IOC representative abstained. Ten POC members failed to cast their votes, but the two members of the Athletes Commission, Heidi Lin Diaz of weightlifting and Jesse Lacuna of swimming, voted in favor of the resolution. Presidential candidate and labor leader Leo Degario Caleode de Guzman vowed to put the needs of workers, farmers, and fishermen first in a new kind of governance if elected. Speaking during the Bakit Ikaw, the presidential job interview program on Wednesday hosted by DZRH in partnership with the Manila Times, de Guzman said, There is a dire need to resolve a host of challenges the country faces, from contractualization and unequal wages to rise tarification and climate change against the backdrop of the coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 pandemic. He said better industries have to be established if the economy is to thrive. He suggested using and funding the agriculture and fisheries sector in the countryside and treating it as the foundation of the economy. The country's logistics industry expects to rebound this year following a slump because of the coronavirus pandemic. The prospects for the sector will be discussed in depth by its movers and shakers in the Manila Times online forum. The Philippines logistics industry scales big and high, an industry outlook for 2022 and beyond at 10 a.m. today. It will be live streamed on the Times of Facebook, YouTube, and Daily Motion accounts. Invited as speakers are Norman Fulgencio, Postmaster General and Chief Executive Officer or CEO of the Philippine Postal Corporation and Sheila Lobien, CEO of the Lobien Realty Group Incorporated. The country's gross domestic product or GDP growth for the third quarter of 2021 was revised downward to 6.9%. From the earlier 7.1%, the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA said on Wednesday, net primary income from the rest of the world recorded an upward revision from negative 52.3% to negative 50.6%. The growth rate in the gross national income in the third quarter of 2021, however, recorded a downward revision from 2.8% to 
the PS8 is set to release today the official fourth quarter and full year 2021 GDP growth data. In New York, LeBron James welcomed Anthony Davis back with the long pass for the game's first basket, then turned to his own offense to score 33 points in the Los Angeles Lakers' 106 over 96 victory over the Brooklyn Nets on Tuesday, Wednesday in Manila. Davis had 8 points in 25 minutes after missing 17 games with a sprained left knee and the Lakers got good nights off the bench from Malik Monk and Carmelo Anthony. James Harden had 33 points, 12 rebounds and 11 assists in an impressive follow-up to his strong game in Los Angeles when the Nets won there on Christmas. Daniel Collins swept into the last four of the Australian Open or AO on Wednesday to match her feat from 2019 and shatter French veteran Alice Cornet dream of making a first Grand Slam semi-final. The American 27 seed came through an intense clash, 7 over 5, 6 over 1 in sweltering temperatures on Rod Laver Arena to continue her resurgence after surgery last year. She will face either Polish 7 seed Iga Swiatek or Estonian veteran Kaya Kanepi for a place in the final. In its editorial, the Manila Times asks health and policy experts of the Philippines whether they are in government or not. Once the country's vaccination campaign is completed, what comes next? Read the full version on the paper's opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. The featured columnists on the front page are Antonio Contreras, Yen Mabenta, and Ed Selagman. Contreras talks elections as a marketplace of ideas and Lagman on the implications of Novak's Novak referring to top seed tennis player Novak Djokovic who was unable to play at this year's Australian Open because he was not vaccinated against COVID-19. These are the top stories for Thursday, January 27, 2022. For more news and information, read the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Facebook Instagram or Twitter and keep up with the times. This is Christian Go Maghanoy, report.